Warning, there will be spoilers for the Star Wars Cassian Andor series following. If you haven't seen it yet, proceed with extreme caution. The writing, directing, acting, the use of real locations with minimal use of CGI, and the complex characters. These are all things that make a strong case for Cassian Andor's origin story, some of the best Star Wars content to come out since, well, I'll let you fill in the blank. With Andor came a different kind of Star Wars story, one that doesn't rely on Jedi, Sith, overly used cameos, an abundance of fan service, Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, or Luke Skywalker to make its mark on Star Wars storytelling. And it worked. The characters are compelling, the world building was amazing, and most characters were developed insanely well. The Andor series deserves the praise it has been getting from me and other Star Wars fans. Today we're going to go over the entire first season of the acclaimed show and see what makes it so powerful while looking at Cassian Andor's character development. This is the Star Wars Andor series season 1 review of Cassian Andor you have been looking for. If you love Star Wars as much as I do, or you're just a casual fan wanting to talk about the greatest franchise ever created, then you've come to the right place, because Star Wars is all I talk about, and I upload new content, well, whenever I can. So if you have an interest in or love for Star Wars, go on and hit that subscribe button and join this growing channel for deeper discussions, theories, and Star Wars lore. Each one of you is appreciated more than you know. When Andor was first announced as a series, I thought, why? I mean, Cassie and Andor wasn't the most interesting character in Rogue One. We hardly had time to even get to know him. Although the movie was groundbreaking and so good on so many levels, I didn't really see a need for a series dedicated to a character we barely knew. But I decided I would give it a chance. Why? Because it's Star Wars, and I love Star Wars. But I didn't have high hopes and expectations for it which turned out to be a reason the series blew me away. From the beginning moments of the first episode, we see this Andor show is going to be different than anything we have seen in Star Wars. Okay, mostly different. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, did about the same thing, but Andor is for sure different than that. In the opening scene, I was on the edge of my seat. This guy just killed two corporate police officers without hesitation, and that wasn't even the best part. Diego Luna's performance was something I wasn't expecting. Not the way he took down the drunken cops, but the close-up of his face just before the action went down. We could almost hear his thoughts. Then he acts without contemplating the consequences. Something we've all done. No, I haven't killed police officers, and I don't advise doing so. But we have all acted out of desperation and not given the consequences a thought when in the moment of fight or flight. Cassian Andor isn't the trained Jedi that we've seen before. He was taught right from wrong, but his teachings were from a parental level, and we can now relate to this character. Within the story of Cassian Andor, we got arcs of more characters than we thought there could be. We thought going into this show that it would be a 12-episode story that centered on Cassian Andor himself. Sure, there would be side characters, but Cassian would be the focus entirely. So we thought. But the show became so much more than that. So much more than just Cassian Andor. His journey would be dependent on so many others. Characters like Luthen Rael, Cyril Karn, and even Mon Mothma to a degree would have an impact on where Cassie Nandor's story would go, and they made the story deep and rich. So many facets that converged on one central goal, that Cassie Nandor had to be pushed into the larger rebellion. Let's face it, when Andor began, he was a hothead that looked out for his own survival and that of his mother, Marva. He wasn't interested in a rebellion against the Empire. He was an average man trying to just get ahead in life by stealing tech from the Empire and selling it on the black market. He didn't care what the tech was going to be used for, but doing so led him on a path, a path of something greater than what he could ever be involved in otherwise. It led him to Luthen Rael, the coordinator of rebellion factions, the contact for independent rebel cells from the funding provided by Mon Mothma, to the extremists in the rebellion of Saul Guerrero's group, all the way down to the team gearing up for the Aldani heist. Luthen is the linchpin of it all, and he was looking for new talent. 
someone who had the guts to casually walk into an imperial installation and steal from them with confidence. And that candidate was Cassian Andor. When Cassian joined up with the Aldani heist conspirators, he wasn't interested in the rebellion the others had dedicated their action towards, just a means to make some money and pay off some debts, a Han Solo in a New Hope sort of character. But during the heist is when the thought first began sparking within him. Is it better to be part of something larger? Is there something to the saying, safety in numbers? Not that it was a driving thought. In the end, he still only wanted the money. After one of their own turned out to be more of a loner than he had let on. It seemed the larger rebellion was just a nuanced version of every man for himself to Cassian Andor. That moment took Cassian back to his previous thoughts that he was better off on his own. But the heist set him on another path, one that although he did run and hide, his actions weren't motivated by the fact that the ISB was looking for him and Luther Rael's assistant had put out a hit on him. Cassian didn't know these things. He just wanted to get away from the rebellion and take his mother with him to a place they could enjoy life without stress. He wanted a new life with a new name, a fresh start. But in the back of his mind, he knew he had stolen from the Empire and had to be very careful. Let's face it, Cassian Andor wasn't much of a team player, but that would change. While on Niamos as a tourist, Cassian would be arrested for nothing more than looking suspicious. Then his charges were trumped up and he was sent to an imperial prison facility on Narkina 5. The production floor on Narkina 5 wasn't just shown as a place where the cruel methods of the empire employed slave labor, although that aspect was highlighted. The undertone theme was that Cassian Andor had to learn to work with others as a team in order to survive and escape. And this is where he really began looking out for others and caring about them. For reference, look at the way he started protecting Olaf when he noticed he wasn't performing as well as he had been. The rumors of the Empire making a mistake and sending a prisoner right back to the same production floor really got Cassian motivated. He had been working with a couple other inmates on an escape plan before this moment, but this rumor was the moment he knew he needed to be a part of something bigger to get out of there. Then, when Olaf died, it was understood that no one would make it out alive if they didn't all act together. Influencing his floor manager was a huge step in this direction. He needed Kino's influence to get everyone on board. If you notice, the other inmates were merely worried that the rumors were true, and it wasn't until Kino Loy gave his speech that there was only one way out, that everyone came together. Cassian Andor could now be seen as a leader, even if he was the leader behind the influence of Kino Loy. This average man had just become something much larger, and he did it without using the Force, or even knowing what the Force is. This is something the Andor series does very well. It shows us that in a galaxy far, far away, there are those who are just average men and women who can make a difference without having superpowers. Some people have questioned as to why Cassian returned to Ferrix after learning of his mother's death, that it didn't make sense. But look at it like this. How many of you wouldn't return home after losing your mother? No matter the stakes. It's simple, really. He loved her and wanted to be there. But Cassian's last time on Ferrix was as a loner before that. With the thought that the only one looking out for him was himself, but this time he understood what a tight-knit group he actually had with Bix always being there for him and Brasso looking out for him. He had to reconnect with them. But once he got there, he learned quickly that so many factions were looking for him and he knew he couldn't escape this alone. But this time, receiving help wasn't going to be one-sided. He wouldn't just flee for his own safety. He would help those closest to him. And he understood there was something bigger worth fighting for than just his own survival. In the end, Cassian Andor's mother was gone. His friends were off to their own safety because of him. He had nothing else to live for. Nothing personal, that is. But when he learned about being a leader and working as a team would change his perspective. He may not have had anything left to live for personally, but he had a skill to offer the rest of the galaxy. It was time to face the one present who was there to ensure he didn't breathe again.
Luthen Rael. As Luthen was under the impression that Cassian had evaded him, he saw him standing before him in his own ship. Cassian had come to confront him and face his fate. At first, this confused Luthen Rael. Why would he actually give him the blaster that would end him? Then Cassian told him, kill me or bring me in, meaning into the rebellion. We can see Luthen's expression change from one of anger to one of being hopeful. This loose end had just offered himself up. Cassian knew who Luthen was and was wanted by so many people and factions, both Imperial and Rebellion. Yet he evaded all of them and was now standing in front of him. Cassian Andor had inadvertently proven he was an asset to the greater good. Cassian Andor was a fighter, a leader, and a man of his word, and Luthen must have thought back to his first impression of Cassian when he recruited him for the Aldani heist and realized that he was right about him in the beginning. And this wasn't just a man who should just be discarded. All along, the theme that good people sometimes do bad things is present. Cassian Andor is one of those good people. He doesn't hesitate to act, even if the consequences could be dire. And some of those things, he does blurs the line between right and wrong. But in the beginning, it was about self-preservation. In the end, it became about a family unit, something larger. I want to do character analysis of all the key players in the Cassian Andor series. Let me know in the comments if you'd like this, or if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about. The Andor series has taken us to a place we didn't fully appreciate when this series was announced. Well, for me it has at least. And that isn't to say that it shouldn't be Jedi and Sith or the Force or Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker and other projects, but this has shown us that there is a larger galaxy with worthy stories to tell of average people who make up the whole of the battle between good and evil. I hope to see more stories like this, coupled with stories of the things we fell in love with Star Wars for. I'd like to do my next video on Cyril Karn, his character development from beginning as an assistant director in the corporate security force all the way to his last scenes in the Andor season one finale. He's such an interesting character, so stay tuned for that one. This is Gerald, a Star Wars fanatic, signing off, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Be good to each other. Thank you for watching. And remember, this is the way. And positivity in the Star Wars community is the only way.